Hello and welcome to Max Difficulty Gaming. I'm Dedeen77. Thank you for joining me and let's play some Galactic Civilizations 3, the beta. This game is currently in its beta 4 incarnation, version 0.72. I believe the beta 4 release is named Fleet Warfare, so I can only assume that fleets have been added by Stardock to the game. Um, fleets are basically armies that you, where you can put individual sh ships in and balance the composition, which is which was a lot of fun in Galactic Civilizations 2. Um, this game is still slated to be released in April 2015. However, in its current state, and l like many other games, it will probably be delayed another month or two. But that's fine, as long as they fix all the bugs, polish things up a little, and uh, in the meantime, we'll just play the beta. So... Right now, my the options are still relatively limited. Um, no point in changing anything. So, so far in Beta 4, six races have been released, and only the Iconians and the Thalans, which the Hive Mind and Sectoids, uh, have yet to be released. And also for each race, um, Stardux has said that there will be a special abilities. But so far, only the UR Singularity, the artificial robots, have an ability called Sentient Machines. This is actually really cool, as it completely changes the dynamic of the game, and how you play the game. This harkens back to um, Endless Legend, where races have traits or abilities that completely change how they are played. Not only in victory conditions, like uh, how certain certain races have influential bonuses so you go you are more likely to go for influential bonuses and influence victory or the dragon with their conquest victory this completely changes how you build how you think about the game how you populate the early game mid game and end game and victory conditions that you might go for um, I can't wait for them to come out for other civilizations because the your one is pretty cool where they don't grow and th like a normal race because they're machines and they manufacture their citizens. Um, so for this playthrough I'll be playing as Terran Alliance who are adventuresome, fast, likable, organized, and productive. For the galaxy type I will choose huge because I will add all the races in, tight clusters. For the galaxy options I will be putting everything on its default, occasional except anomaly frequency which I will set as common because I want to see all the types of anomalies they've added into the game. Um, so far in beta 4 all the victory options are now available. Um, like previous galactic civilizations there are conquest which is kill everyone, influence which is basically culturally dominate your rivals, research which is go really far into the tech tree, um, alliance, which is basically uniting the galaxy through alliances. Turn limit, which is score. And a new one, which is ascension. So as there are ascension crystals scattered all around the map. So this victory condition is more of a quest type victory condition. Which adds a little bit of everything, but you need to collect things. It's like a fetch quest. So for the game settings, I'll put... There are many things still not able to be changed, but I'm going to change the galactic events from occasional to abundant because this is also a new addition and I want to see how it turns out. So seeing how this is uh, max difficulty gaming, I'm obviously going to be playing on the maximum difficulty, which in previous games was suicidal, but in this game is so far beta 4 is godlike, so it goes beginner, normal, gifted, genius, godlike. So I'm going to have every single other race in here, all so that the map will contain all six races. And let us begin. So a little bit of background. I play. I didn't play Galactic Civilizations 1, but I played a fair amount of Galactic Civilizations 2. Um, probably a few hundred hours of it. And I, my favorite race, I want to say, was were the Altarians with uh, technological victories, or turn-based victory, turn limit based victories on suicidal I think I beat once or twice um, so far for this beta 
fixed. I don't know if Stardock has completely updated the AI to its perfection. Um, so I don't know if Godlike will be very difficult or very easy. Um, I like the way Stardock approaches things, where they approach AI difficulty very keenly. They focus on it. It's one of the best selling points of uh, Stardock and the Galactic Civilizations franchise. They, unlike other 4x strategy games like Civilization, they focus less on the cheating AI part of aspect, part of the balance, where the AI basically starts off with more technology than you, more money, they pay less maintenance, they, their buildings require less uh, production. Um, in Galactic Civilizations, I want to say they like focusing on the AI part of it more, where it's less about bonuses and more about gameplay. Um, so, so far, in this game, there are a few big changes. Um, well, game has started. Um, I am, I am the Terran Alliance. I am the Terran Alliance, and basically the Terrans are good at the early game, uh, where because they're naturally adventurous, strength and weaknesses, Terrans are naturally adventurous with fast long-range ships. So basically that's good for scouting, exploration for anomalies, scouting for habitable planets, and uh, having the colony ships reach fast and far and having basically a good start to their production. So the production capacity and diplomatic abilities also help the early game where the production kicks in early and they get production bonuses so that you can pump out those colony ships like no tomorrow and the diplomatic abilities allows you to hold off on building military fleets and ships until later on into the game. So you can use charm to hold the hordes at bay essentially. Okay, so two big differences that this game has implemented. One is that you can see here this is a shipyard. So this shipyard is in the middle of space. If you played the previous Galactic Civilizations, you would know that shipyards used to be on planets where they were they took up a tile and each planet had its own shipyard production. So you had to build a shipyard on a planet to produce ships. Now that there are shipyards that you can also build on planets, but they're like a unit. As long as the shipyard is within six units of a planet, the planet can contribute production to the shipyard. So say you have th three planets, or two planets, say Mars and Earth. So as long as the shipyard is within six tiles of Mars and Earth, both Mars and Earth can contribute resources to the shipyard. So you could have multiple planets pumping out like a mega capital ship really fast. And that's that helps a lot because, especially on small planets like Mars, you simply don't have the space to build a waste of tile on a shipyard. And this adds a very interesting aspect of the game where you can build your shipyards further on the front line. So say you're fighting a the Drangid up north, you can send your shipyard slowly up north so you can unanchor it and move it. Just like that. And that's really cool. The second biggest um, change to the game is let me just go to the planet management screen here. And basically what has happened is that in pre prior galactic civilizations, similar to Civ Civilization V and Civilization Beyond Earth, uh, manufacturing, research, and net income, all these things, buildings change the base production. So say right now my raw production is 6.7 with a productive bonus of 15, which is my race trait uh, as Terrans. Basically, if you build a factory, in prior games and in Civilization, you add to the raw manufacturing. So instead of 6.7, you add, say, 2, and it will become 8.7. But in this game, Stardock has do done this really interesting thing where they base the base production purely off the population of the planet. So if you put... so. The 6.7 manufacturing right now is purely based off the population of the planet which grows uh, as you build farms and stuff. And this this is really cool because the factories are only a manufacturing percentage bonus. So now it adds a whole new dimension to the game where you have to focus on both the growth of the planet as well as the manufacturing bonuses and the like and research bonuses and consulate bonuses and influence bonuses. 
And that's really cool because you have to, you basically have to think about how am I going to grow this planet as fast as possible, especially colonies, and how do I build the most efficient units. Um, another basic input they've added into this game is that they've added bonus to adjacent improvements. So your capital has bonuses to adjacent improvements, and so do your buildings. So you can see here that the basic factory has a bonus to adjacent improvement plus one level to manufacturing. So basically if you build three factories to each other, next, two factories next to each other, they give each other a bonus as you can see by this little arrow sign. So what this does is that it boosts the a factory boosts the production of a next door factory. This means that you should be much smarter in placing your buildings, unlike before where you can pretty much place it everywhere, anywhere, unless you wanted bonuses. So Earth in this has um three seems to have three bonuses. So I have one floodplain, plus one to population, plus one to wealth, rare stones, plus three to wealth, plus one to influence, and an ancient wonder, which is plus three to influence, plus one to tourism. Um so right now I'm going to build probably two factories next to each other. Uh, I'm just going to straight out buy one because it'll give me a quick boost to production. We can pull up the Govern Planet screen, which is where you can micromanage all your production. This slider right here this decides, basically lets you decide if you want to send all your production towards the star base, uh, the star shipyard essentially, so starship manufacturing to the right 100%, or if you want to focus everything on the planet, so basically the manufacturing research and net income of the planet. So I'm going to send everything to the planet social construction right now, the planet construction, and I'm going to, and I am going to put everything on research. Um, like in Galactic Civilizations 2 and before, this game does not allow overflow production. So say, uh, say your factory takes, in this case, 30 manufacturing costs. If you put two turns of 20 manufacturing onto it, then on the second turn, 10 manu manufacturing units will be wasted because it does not overflow automatically to the next, build, uh, next basically, construction unit. Um, this is different to Civilization, where basically everything automatically carries over, including research. This game does not carry over in research, too. So, as you can see, I'm gonna... The technology screen is still very pretty much the same um it's not like endless space or civilization beyond earth where they have a web webbed research tree tech tree and i actually prefer the web tech tree a lot more but what can you do so i'm going to focus on colonization i'm going to choose planetary improvement for the farms remember you need farms to boost that growth rate so that you can get that base production up so right now, planetary improvement takes three turns. Um, it'll probably take a little less than three turns, and I will have to micromanage it later because I don't want an overflow. If there's an overflow, it's basically wasted research, similar to the production. And this is still the beta, so hopefully they will change that because that is way too much micromanaging for me. So right now, we are, a, it seems to be the west of the galaxy. Um, we have this huge patch of stars. So, right off the bat, we start with a survey ship, which has very far range and speed, a scout ship, and a colony ship. I am probably going to send the survey ship to research the artifact, Anomaly, which is within my range. This is cool. The survey ship cautiously approaches the mysterious object. Interesting. So we have found some mysterious hardware in the artifact. The alien computational systems found in this capsule are so advanced that your survey team lacks the words to describe all. So basically it gives me a 25% boost to planetary improvement, which is pretty amazing. I think that will apply to my buildings once I build them. I just want to... that's probably the best thing I've ever seen. I've ever found. So I'm going to send my scout ship to this star system and my colony ship to the southern one because I want to 
colonize as fast as possible. So my habitable planet is set at occasional, so there might not be too many planets that I can colonize and rush out. And the last part of this, my first turn, I'm going to check out the ideology. So if you remember Galactic Civilizations 2, if you played it, there were ideologies. Basically, races in Galactic 2 were based off ideologies. In this game, the races are just there, and you choose your own ideological traits. And so basically, these are these ideological traits give you bonuses. So with and they cost points. So see here, uh, the benevolent, educated, enlightenment trait costs 15 and grants 125 free research points. The cost of 15 is 15 benevolent points. So you get these points, pragmatic, malevolent, or benevolent, um, by basically colonizing planets and making decisions. Um, I believe there are also anomalies that make you choose based off your ideolog ideology. So basically when you colonize a planet, um, often there is a decision that you have to make. So you have to decide, say, do I take this weapon out of the ice caps and flood the rest of the planet and kill all the native life forms? Um, if you do decide to do that, you probably get malevolent points because you killed everything and you got a weapon. If you're benevolent, you probably will leave the weapon and not kill any of the life forms. So basically, in the case of malevolent, you would have gotten an extra weapon, and that's really good. But in benevolent, you would have gotten nothing. So how the Stardock balances this, this is that they make the bele b benevolent ideological traits a little bit better than the malevolent, malevolent ones. So in this way, you in malevolent you malevolent decisions you get an instant bonus as soon as you colonize the planet, and in the good side, um, you would get longer benefits, long long spanning benefits that you build up to, and that is the balance. Um, the ship designer, there's nothing to say about that. You either like it or you don't. Um, right now, it's still in its trial phase. I believe they just added it pretty recently. Um, I can't actually rotate the ships right now because they haven't added an input selection for the rotation, and my middle mouse button does not seem to be working. But that's okay. I'm sure in the it'll be just as fun in the main part of the game when the game actually comes out. So I'm going to end my first turn. And I'm going to keep flying out my shipyard because hopefully there will be habitable planets that I can that can contribute to the shipyard to the east. Um, remember there is no there are no planets beyond three tiles of suns. So basically you don't have to go too far out to see if there are habitable planets or not. So right now I don't see any habitable planets. There are some resources and asteroid fields like in the uh, Toilet of Arnor expansion to Galsiv 2. Uh, my basic factory has finished production, so I don't wanna I don't wanna waste the factory bonus that I just got, so I'm going to send some production over to manufacturing so that I get that 25% bonus to, with basic factory. In this case, planetary improvement only takes one more turn to finish, and that's actually really good. So I'm going to turn the research even less because you have to micromanage it, so 5 research maybe should still let me improve nope, it's 4 turns, so obviously this is still a beta, so there will still be improvements so in this case the research tooltip did not update and as such I need to increase the research back up to see if it only takes 1 turn, so there's a little bit of mic micromanaging, and it also does not show the research yet, which is troublesome. So it still takes two turns. And I believe if I increase it a little bit more to 19, it should take one turn. Yes, it takes one turn now. So this is perfect. I don't waste any uh, research overflow. And I still get 1.7 uh, <laughs> manufacturing bonus from my basic factory. I will be building a consulate here. I normally do not build a consulate first because 
Um, I don't feel like influence is that important to begin with, but because there is an ancient wonder bonus here, which gives plus three to influence, that's too good to pass up. So I'm going to be building that. I will be ending my second turn. And I have finished researching planetary improvement. So next I'm going to probably go into Xeno Industrialization to boost out my factories and colony ships later on, while I keep exploring for habitable planets. There doesn't seem to be anything currently, which is slightly sad. Make sure you can also position your survey ship to explore two solar systems at once because it has such a far vision range. I really hope there isn't like a 16, class 16 planet here that I just completely decided to miss out because it's so far out of the way and I did not want to waste a, waste a few turns to get there. So right now I can change so much, much more of my production into manufacturing because um, I prize manufacturing a lot more now due to the fact that it's much more worth it to get manufacturing and my Xeno farms out. I do believe I can build, yes, I can build a Xeno farm there, I can build that, and I'm gonna, I, okay, so I can move the consulate to a later stage. And basically what happens now is that I'm gonna have to try to micromanage the factories perfectly so that there's no waste of production, um, which is which is a little annoying, but that's fine. I'm gonna end my third turn. I'm gonna keep sending out my shipyard and in, in the hopes that there's a single habitable planet within range that I won't not have to base all my production from Earth. Oh, some lag issues. But that's fine. Um, so basically, my plan is to use these three ships to find as many habitable planets. Oh, it's another anomaly. It's a ship graveyard. So basically, what I'm trying to do is I'm going to try to find as many habitable planets as possible. And immediately after, after I find two or three, I'm going to start buying colony ships. Um, remember that the default colony ships they give you? are not perfect. They are usually pretty bad because they contain two life support modules and you really don't need two life support modules to reach that far. So I would suggest you go to the designer and like me build a ship that has a hyperdrive so it lets you get to a planet faster and colonize it faster and have that population growth starting as fast as possible. And no life support because the the ship range is decent enough as long as you're not trying to colonize this planet halfway across the galaxy and yeah and obviously have your colony module and that'll actually save you some money or save you some manufacturing cost when you start building your colony ships or buying them depending on what you want to do so right now there's the basic factory see right now the basic factory probably requires five more raw manufacturing units but I can't it doesn't overflow so what I will probably do is I will buy it and hopefully it'll carry over I'm not sure if it carries over if you buy or not so I'm gonna spend more on research and just see if the Senate the Xeno farm gets a little bonus after I will there's an idle ship here I'm still looking for a colon, colonizable planet still haven't found one yet it's a little sad but um that's okay because I can colonize Mars if need be or I can start building constructor ships and getting these bonuses from these Durantium resources which I believe might be a production bonus I'm not sure there might be a time where I have to start focusing on research soon I'm gonna explore the ship graveyard hopefully something awesome will happen a powerful ship drifts clearly damaged, battle damage beyond repair. So it has an advanced drive system. So basically, all our ships in my fleet, in this specific fleet, will go a lot faster. So my survey ship 
right now has 7 movement. Compared that to 3 moves on my s scout ship and 5 moves on my colony ship. So that's really good for helping me find more planets. Even though this star system is completely devoid of life. Sadly, the Malik system. Um, in the Galactic Civilizations 2, there were... There were... Let me end my turn first. Anchor, anchor Starship? Shipyard? Turn? So basically, in Galactic Civilizations 2, the... Basically, the type of sun also determines if there are many habitable planets around it. So like, red giants like Zubaz or... Um, white giants like Sonra, Sonra, or white dwarfs like Spring Change, they really don't have habitable planets. You need to find a nice yellow, similar to our sun, Sol, which has some very nice habitable planets around it. So like this red giant, this isn't going to have anything, most likely. Um, maybe I should have changed the options so that there would be more. Oh, there is, I have found my first habitable planet in Encarta. Encarta 3 is ideal for any type of colony. It is class 10, Earth-like. And, oh, there is also another Encarta, Encarta 2, class 12. And, eh, so planets now have, possibly have bonuses. So this one is called the Ghost World, and it has plus 50 to total research. So this is a great for a research colony. Um, abandoned world full of strange new artifacts to study. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to build a... I'm going to manage. I'm going to build a colony ship, my custom colony ship, with a hyperdrive and no um, no modules. I'm going to buy it straight up because I want to get onto that research planet at ASAP. So hopefully... I should have moved this probably closer to that star system, but there was no way for me to know. So right now you can see, yes, it did carry over. So if you buy the production, it will carry over to the next one, but not if you don't buy it. So knowing that, I will change more of my manufacturing to production. Probably most of it because I want to finish that Xeno farm ASAP. And I will keep on exploring the solar system with my colony ship. Does not seem to, there <laughs> there does not seem to be any colonizable planets in that star system. Another artifact. I will come back and research that. So this is the turn of end of turn six. I'm gonna cut this let's play part one to end right now. Uh, we've had a good first look at the game and I will continue it later. Um, make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and um, since this is one of my first let's plays I please comment below to give me cons any constructive criticism whatsoever and um, Make sure to spy and support Stardock and Galactic Civilizations 3 when it comes out. Thanks and see you next time.